So ladies and gentlemen, in the first part of our Bernie Parra career retrospective podcast, we talk about the fact that when Parra jumped from the Maple Leafs to the Philadelphia Blazers, he didn't want to go back to the Leafs despite the fact the Leafs had his uh, rights, which he had carried over from the, uh, uh, from the Flyers. Now, as it happened, Toronto traded his rights back to the Philadelphia Flyers and for Doug Favell, which was his teammate at the Flyers in the early 70s before the Leafs trade. Now, when Perron arrived back in town, literally, he liked the Eagles song, he was a new man in town. The next two seasons uh, were the best of his career, and uh, he contracted a disease called shutoutitis. In two combined regular season playoff uh, campaigns, he had 30 shutouts. Now, uh, many hockey writers consider those two years the best for a goalie in uh, modern history. I tend to agree, but only Ken Dryden and maybe uh, uh, Martin Bordeaux could, uh, could match. But between 73 and 75, when the Flyers won two cups, uh, he played uh, 73 uh, games in his uh, first uh, Stanley Cup season with a 1.89 goal against average, a 9.33 save percentage, and 12 uh, shutouts. Now, uh, he began that year with two shutouts, beating Favelle in the season opener, and he also shared the Vezina Trophy that year with uh, Chicago's Tony Esposito as Philly and Chicago tied for the lowest uh, goals against in the regular season. Now he was named a first-team All-Star and finished second in voting for the Hart Trophy as MVP. Uh, now uh, the Flyers finished first place in the West Division and uh, in their successful Stanley Cup run, he won the Connie Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP and uh, led uh, the Flyers to the six-game triumph over Boston. Now in the final contest of the championship round, he uh, stopped a savage slap shot from Ken Hodge with a classic kick save more than tr- with less than three minutes of play to uh, secure the victory as it was the Bruins' 30th and last shot. Now, uh, because the save preserved a one out nothing victory, it was often used as a highlight during advertising for NBC's coverage of the NHL into the 75 season. Now, in 75, he again posted 12 shutouts in a regular season with a 2.03 Goals against average and a 918 save percentage. He won the Vezina again. He uh, got a first team all selection for the second consecutive year and was a playoff MVP for the second straight uh, campaign as he defeated uh, Buffalo in the finals. He also finished fourth in a higher trophy of voting. Now, the uh, playoff performance was to many considered better than 74 as uh, he had four uh, four shutouts in the playoffs, which equates to a whole series, with a uh, with a 1.89 goals against average, uh, which was 0.2 better than his uh, season before. Now he shut out Buffalo in the final game of the series, uh, one nothing, uh, two nothing in '75, and uh, there was an expression in Philadelphia which tied into his career, only the Lord saves more than Bertie Perron, which became a uh, bumper sticker and catchphrase phrase in Philadelphia in those years. Now, problem is in 76, uh, he had some nagging uh, kind of partial injuries, but in that campaign, uh, he was sidelined by a preseason neck injury that required surgery, and he only skated 11 games in 76, with Wayne Stevenson taking uh, much of the load. Now, the problem was a pinched nerve in his neck, which caused a regional pain. Now, doctors did remove his disc and a section of bone, hoping to alleviate the symptoms, but Perron suffered from continued pain in his neck throughout the rest of his career. Now, he returned to the lineup late in the season, but it was inconsistent and could not regain the starting job from former Team Canada netminder Wayne Stevenson. Now, without Perron's consummate level performance that year, the Flyers fell to Montreal in the Stanley Cup Finals in four straight games. Now, uh, over the next three seasons, he experienced difficulties at times uh, because hockey was changing from a defense-oriented game to one that favored high scoring. And big uh, skaters like Mike Bossy, Gilles Lafleur, and Steve Sharp were becoming major stars and dominating play while the defensive game was starting to get less respect and less usage. Now, uh, Jacques Plant, although in retirement, continued to have a strong influence on Perron's career. Perron, like Plant, was a stand-up type goalie. 
at uh, one point, Parent was playing poorly and considered retirement, but planned watch and practice of Philadelphia two days, then told Perron exactly what he was doing wrong. He was sitting back in his heels, backing into the crease and losing concentration. Perron heeded Plant's advice and returned to form. And in the 78th season, he adopted a more confident, challenging style, characteristic of his play during the title years, by posting a 2.22 goal against average and a 91.2 save percentage. And he had seven shutouts in 49 games. However, as the 70s were drawing to his uh, close, the era of the stand-up goaltender was coming to an end. The never-before-seen goal-scoring totals of the early 80s eventually forced a revolution in goaltender style and play. The butterfly style of Patrick Watt became the dominant style, and the stand-up style of Perron Plant became a relic of the past. And Plant is, Perron is considered to be, many, to be the last great stand-up goalie. Now, on February 7, 79, uh, more injuries uh, hit him as he suffered a a career-ending eye injury in the game against the New York Rangers. And Aaron Stick entered the front eye hole of his mask, causing permanent damage to his vision. Uh, it caused hospitalization, including the complete loss of sight for two weeks. Perron did recover to eventually regain sight, although at the level required to resume his playing career. He retired at age 34, an age considered to be still in athletic, athletic prime for goalies. The incident, as well as the ending of Jerry Desjardins' career when a buck struck his eye, in 77, led many, led many NHL goalies to switch from fiberglass face masks towards the cage and helmet style, and it resulted in numerous amateur and junior leagues banning fiberglass masks altogether, mandating the helmet-cage combo. Now, after Perron's retirement from the Flyers, he retired his number, number one, in his honor on October 11, 79. He spent several years in the Flyers organization as a goalie coach, mentoring future Hall of Famers Future Vezina winning, winning goalies, excuse me, Ron Hextall and Pelle Lindbergh, the la latter of which idolized Perron as a youngster in his native Sweden. Now, uh, today he's a Flyer ambassador and uh, he can often be seen at Flyers home games on the concourse. Now, unable to deal with the early loss of his career, uh, Perron turned to alcohol and eventually ended up in the rooms of AA. He has been actually clean and sober for well over 30 years. In a 2007 interview with Philadelphia Magazine, he sheepishly admitted he was watching the clock take off the final seconds of his aiming Game 6 against Boston in the 74 Finals, and he was not paying attention to play when Bobby Orr sent a desperation length of the ice shot towards the Flyers' goaltender. The puck went wide at just four seconds to play. If the shot is on net, it's a goal, Perron was quoted in the interview. The game was over seconds later. The Flyers had won their first of consecutive championships. Now, because uh, Perron still remains one of the most popular uh, skaters in Philadelphia history, uh, uh, chants of Bernie, Bernie, Bernie used to rock the spectrum when he played and still can be heard when Bernie's appearance in the crowd is uh, signified by the Flyers announcer. Now, he was inducted in the NHL Hall of Fame in 84, and in 98 he became uh, uh, on the Hockey News list of 100 greatest NHL players at 63. Now, uh, he currently lives in Cherry Hill, uh, New Jersey, and uh, he came out of uh, retirement in uh, 2012 to play in the NHL Winter Classic Alumni Game. Uh, he played uh, five minutes in that contest, letting no goals on five shots, including a breakaway by f former uh, New York Ranger uh, Ron Duguay, who was a uh, on-ice challenger of uh, Perron to his final years. He was later named the first star of the game. Now, awards and achievements. Memorial Cup in 65. WHA second All-Star team in 73. NHL first All-Star team 74-75. Connie Smite winner 74-75. Vezina 74-75. Stanley Cup championships 74-75. Um, played in the 69-70, 74-75-77 NHL All-Star games. Class Guy award winner 79. Uh, retirement of his number one jersey by the Flyers. Hall of Fame induction, uh, uh, Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame uh, induction in 2004, and his catchphrase still reigns supreme as uh, one of the best one-line comments on anything sports. It's a beautiful thing, man. Now, a uh, book on Perron's life, Journey to Risk and Fear, is published by uh, Balesta Incorporated, written by uh, him and Michael Pava pa pa and Dean Smith, uh, sort of like a life uh, coach. Now, 
Now he because he once held the uh, mark for most wins of the seasons, which was passed by Martin Bordeaux in 2007 with 48. Uh, his 47 wins in regulation is still a mark for the regular season. Now Perron did not have uh, uh, the benefit of overtime or shootouts uh, or a longer season in his era. Uh, back then, uh, between 72 and 78 games until expansion. Now, he's also the forward hockey player and third goalie to appear on the cover of uh, uh, Time magazine. Now, Lauren Shabbat was the first. Total NHL uh, stats, 608 goals, 271, 198, 121, 35,000 minutes played, 55 shutouts with a 2.55 average. Playoffs, 38-33. Uh, six shutouts, 4,302 minutes. So Bernie Perron, a legend in every level. If he wouldn't have had so many injuries, he would have played into the early 80s. But he probably would have found his way to uh, maybe a former WHA team. WHA team. be interesting if Edmonton, who could have mentored uh, Fewer and Moog uh, just as a 20-game uh, uh, a year guy, I would uh, be really impressed to see that. So that's part two of the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for listening. Again, give me a like, comment, or subscribe. Because the channel uh, is not monetized, it's basically for you. If you're taking time and it's Labor Day in Canada to listen, I really appreciate it. But don't don't forget, if you like the channel, tell your friends. If you don't like it, well, don't tell anybody. Have a good day. Bye.